So let's look at that sixth question from the lecture notes. So what's the information? We uh, know we are looking at bus, bus arrival times, okay? So, and we are looking at particular intervals, okay? So we have a fixed interval of 30 minutes. So that's important for Poisson distributions. And we are asking, so it's a, assume that the number 42 bus to come down Oxford Road is Poisson distributed. So let's call our random variable, we'll call that B, and that is the number of buses in a 30 minute interval. So then further information from the table, you know that on average, you should see three buses in 30 minutes. Now, why is this, uh, why is this important? Because we know that for Poisson distribution, the expected value of B, okay, is equal to the parameter of the Poisson distribution. Now, in our case, this will now be three. Why will it be three? Well, because we're being told that on average, so our expected value is three. Okay, so this information allows us to set that mu to three. So we are talking about a Poisson distribution with a parameter of three. So now we can go to part A of the question. What's the probability that in 30 minutes there's no bus coming down your way? So here we are talking about probability that b is equal to zero. And we know the formula that is mu to the power of, I'll first write it down in generic form, okay? So since our random variable is called b, the outcome we'll call little b, uh, mu to the power of b times e to the power of negative mu divided by b factorial. Okay, so in our particular case, this is now mu to the zero. Uh, and since you know mu as well already, so mu we know is equal to three. So three to the power of little b, that little b, this little b here and here, this comes from which value we want to calculate the probability for. So what we have is three to the power of zero times e to the power of negative three, because mu is three, okay, so that one comes from over here. And then divided by zero factorial. Now, three to the power of zero is one. E to the negative three, we get to that in a second, and zero factorial turns out to be one as well. Okay, it's a special case for factorials, zero factorial is defined as being equal to one. So all we need now is E to the negative three. So um, how do we calculate that? Three, and here on my calculator for Windows, I need to first press the inf, and then here we have the e to the power of something. So e to the power of three is 20.0855. So, so if I was to enter here 20.055, we would get 20.055, we immediately realize this can't be a probability because it's larger than one. What was the mistake I made? What we need is e to the negative three, but that's not what I calculated. I calculated e to the three. So let me do that calculation again, negative three and now e. So what we get is 0 0.0498 rounded. 0.0498 and that means you get as a result exactly that 0498 so there is approximately 
a 5% probability that there will be no bus. Will be no bus in 30 minutes. Okay, so part B. What's the probability that in 30 minutes we'll see more than four buses pass? So probability that B is larger than four. Okay. Um, so that is, of course, the same as the probability of one minus the probability that we get at most three buses. Okay, why is that? Well, there are only two options. Either we get four or more, or we get less than three. Okay, so these two uh, options, um, let's not call it outcome possibilities, any case or any outcome will fall into either of these two categories. Okay, more than um, uh, sorry, I have to be more than four or, um, I wasn't, that was not quite right, or smaller or equal than four. Okay, more than, four, because more than four, of course, does not include four. So, let me just make that clear. What are the possible outcomes? We get, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now we have two possible outcomes, either A or this different color, B. Now outcome A is more than four. That means everything from here. Okay, and there are lots of more opportunities. In fact, there's an infinite number of opportunities, more than six. Whereas this group of outcomes, that's our probability B, probability that we get up to four buses. That's the second possible outcome, and here we call that A. Now, what's the probability that we get one of these outcomes, either A or B? The probability is one. And since they are mutually exclusive, that means they have to add up to one. That was one of our basic laws of probability. So therefore, probability that we get more than four is the same as one minus the probability of getting up to four. So now this probability B, this we can calculate. Okay, That one here, probability A, is basically with our Poisson formula. We can't calculate it because it's an infinite problem. So we have to formulate the problem in terms of probability B. So in probability up to four, what we have here, that is one minus the probability that B is equal to zero plus the probability that B is equal to one plus the probability that B is equal to two plus the probability of actually P that B is equal to three plus the probability that B is equal to 4. So now you can see there are five probabilities we need to calculate here. Each of these probabilities uses the same sort of formula as up here. And now you can do that uh, either by hand five times or you can practice your Excel skills. So let's do that. Let's uh, call up a little Excel sheet and we can do uh, use a little bit of our formula skills. So let's first say our mu in this case is 3 and the outcomes we want is 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay, for the four probabilities which we want to calculate. So let's calculate the first probability and that is uh, going to be, and we can, uh, we can look at our formula, let me just move it over here, at the formula which we have here. So we need mu to the power of b. So we have mu and we'll put 
dollar signs in here because as we copy it that shouldn't change so the power of the outcome times the exponential of negative mu so times the exponential of negative mu and then divide it by factorial of the outcome and the formula in Excel is fact for factorial and zero. Okay, so 0 0.0498. So this is of course exactly the outcome we had uh, we had before 0 0.0498 for the probability that there's no bus. Okay, so the uh, the nice thing now is if you now double click this one, so. Uh, we see we are referring to mu twice here and here in the exponential. Actually, we should put dollar signs here to fix that as well. So we have exactly the same. And now I copy this down and we get all the other probabilities. Okay. And in Excel, so these are five probabilities. Uh, let me just write them down. So we have Therefore, aye, aye, aye. that's not wanted. Okay. So, here we go. That is equal to one minus the sum of all point O. 498 plus 0.1494 plus 0.2240. You should get exactly the same result if you do the calculations by hand. So whatever you want to practice more, you can do it that way. And 0.1 six eight zero and we need the sum well of course I'm going to do this conveniently in Excel eight one five three so that will be equal to one minus zero point eight five ah Eight one five three, and that is going to be zero point one eight four seven. So that's approximately an eighteen point five percent probability that there will be more than four buses. four passes in a 30 minute interval that's what we're talking about so let's move on to the next question we uh, I'm gonna copy it in. question this is this is a bit more complex and we'll have to this is not only just calculation we have to think a little bit about this question all right so what's the situation here you're managing a, a company servicing telephone helplines you know that the number of phone calls during an hour is pros or distributed Okay, so perhaps you will use some uh, notation here. That's called a random variable. Uh, P is the number of calls in one hour. Okay, and that P is Poisson distributed. Poisson. So the question is now, what is the, we know the Poisson distribution has one parameter mu. To calculate probabilities, we need that one parameter mu. Now it turns out that that parameter mu 
here takes on different values. Okay, during normal working hours it is 550, during peak hours it is 876. So I'll say mu is 550 and let's call it that mu1 and mu2 is 876. And that's me too. So just to differentiate the two, you can do you can give them different names however you want. All right. So we also know there's some extra information. We should be aware of that on average one employee can handle six phone calls every hour. So the question is now, how many employees do you need on duty to ensure that with a probability of 99% you can handle all the incoming calls? So Basically, what the, the main idea here is that we have number of calls divided by six should be the number of employees you need. Okay, if you should expect 600 phone calls in an hour, you should have um, 100 employees present, okay, to be able to handle them. But now, of course, we know that this guy here, okay, this is really our random variable p. Okay, so this is random. So we don't know the outcome of these uh, for certain. And should you get more than the expected number, then your employees can't handle them anymore. So the basic idea of the problem is that if you have Poisson distribution, we know this is going to look something like this. Okay, and this is now very stylized. It's a discrete dis uh, distribution, really. But let me, for graphical reason, I would just approximate it with a continuous distribution. Okay, it will, it will look something, something like this. And we know that with there will be some tail of that distribution with probability 1%, okay, where the, we have the, mag or the, the, the largest number of phone calls, okay, the 1% largest number of phone calls. And let's call this number P99, okay, this number of phone calls where with 99% probability we will get at most this number of phone calls. And with 1% probability, we get more. Now, what this manager now wants to ensure is that he wants to find that number because he knows if he divides that number by 6, he will get the number of employees that with 99% probability can handle all the phone calls that come in in an hour. Only in 1% of times, there will be more phone calls that can be handled more than the number that can be handled by these employee by the number of employees. So what we now want to calculate is this number and then we divide by six and that will be the number of employees the manager should have or uh, should use. Now you can see that we have very large mu's. Okay. So that means for for this large number of uh, for, for this size of uh, parameter for the Poisson distribution, we can, um, so for large mu, we can approximate, approximate the Poisson distribution distribution with a normal distribution. With a normal distribution with mean uh, mu and variance and variance mu. Okay, so this is now this is now quite convenient. So what we are basically saying is, let's pick out 
one of our news, let's say uh, uh, the case, case one, where mu one is equal to 550. Uh, is that right? Was it 550? Yeah, that is 550. Okay. That means that now P, the number of phone calls, is really normally distributed with mean 550 and standard deviation, we know the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, 550 square root. Okay, so that one is the standard deviation. So, and with this number we know we can translate that into a standard normal case and calculate probability. So let's do this graphically now. So what we want when we calculate with normal distributions we know that we are working with a table which is in the state world, okay, which is the standard normal a standard normally distributed random variable. So now what we want is we want the probability um, so I use to uh, differentiate it from P, our random variable, which is phone calls. I should have chosen something else. So I'll say the probability that P is larger, and I'll remember what we want. We want our P99 is larger than P99 should be 0.1%. So we want that value here, okay? That's the question. We know that we can translate that into a standard normal probability. So we want a value here that is larger than 0.1. So let's start with this. But once we have this value here, we can work back to what that P99 is because we have the mean and the standard deviation, okay? So we'll start with the table. So we want now, first, what we want to find out is which value here in the standard normal distribution cuts off 1% of the distribution. That means here we have 99%. So I happen to have a normal table here. And we know we have to find the value in the table that is closest to 99. And here, this is our value, 0 0.9901. The one before was 0 0.9898. So this is closest to 99, and that is 2.33. Okay, the top of this column is a three. Okay, so we know that this value here is not a question mark anymore. It is. 2.33. So we know the probability that Z is larger than 2.33 is 1%. So now we need to find a translation of that 2.33 to that P99 value. Now remember, how would we have calculated the set value. We would have calculated the set value by if we had were given a value for P99. We would have taken that value, we would have subtracted the mean, remember your normal standardization formula, we have subtracted the mean and divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so recall Z is equal to if we had a random variable called x, we would have x minus its mu, uh, mean divided by the standard deviation. So that's what we've done here, using our information about the standard deviation. So now, however, we don't have a value for p99, but we know that z value. That is 2.33. So it means we now have to solve this equation here for p99. Now, this is not so difficult. 
because that is how to do it step by step. We multiply both sides the square root 550. So we have P99 minus 550 is equal to 2.33 times square root 550. And then we isolate P99. That is equal to 2.33 times square root of 550 plus 550. How did we get here? We added 550 on both sides of the equation. And this we now just need to calculate. So let's get back our calculator. So let's start with 550 square root. Um, That, uh, sorry, that was not the right. So, uh, unfortunately, this calculator is a bit silly, so I have to say 550, and I want the second root 23.145. That's about right. You can check that. That one squared should get 550 approximately. Now, times 2.33, and then plus. 550 and the result is 60464 604.64 so that means now we can go back this value here this one here is 604.64 that means how many employees does the manager need so employees, employees to handle um, 600 and let's say 605, that is uh, calls, is 605 divided by 6 which is approximately 101 employees okay so the manager should have 101 people in the phone center in uh, five new 550 that was during normal working hours okay during normal working hours let's briefly briefly review what we need to change for the peak time the peak time our parameter is this guy, um, U2. So what will change in our calculation? Well, what will change is our distribution here. Okay, so we have a different mu here, and therefore how we translate that 2.33 back into P99, that will change. But 2.33 didn't involve any mu parameter. That, that was done in our set world so that will stay. So basically, we only have to repeat this last bit of calculation, the green bit. So I will put that in red. So case two was um, 876 for me. So case two, mu two was 876. That means now our P is approximately normally distributed with 876 mean and standard deviation the square root of 876. So we'll, uh, we'll still have our translation formula here. So we'll do exactly the same. We'll say Z equals P99, but now minus 876 divided by the square root of 876 and that should equal 2.33 as we said that 2.33 will not change and now we can perhaps I'll just do it a little bit quicker we can we can jump immediately to this line because we can see what uh, the changes are p.99 but you can go through it step by step again is 2.33 that's not going to change 
times the square root of 876 and then plus 876. Uh, let's read our calculator again. There we go. So if you have 876 square root times 2.33 equals plus 876. So here we have 944.96 equals 944.96. So that means employees to handle approximately 945 phone calls in an hour calls per hour um, and that would be 945 divided by 6 so just calculate 945 divided by 6 157.5 since you don't have uh, half an employee that's about 158 okay so I can say that is about 158 the manager needs 158 people so you can see what the task of the manager is it's fine you can uh, you can employ a hundred about a hundred people for all of the day but in the peak period you need about 60 extra so that was uh, this question, but perhaps let's just briefly review again because that uh, was sort of a combination of the number of steps. So we know the manager wanted to find out which number of phone calls would, with 99% probability, not be exceeded. Okay, there's only one in a hundred days where you get more than that number of phone calls. So this number here we wanted. And he knew that P was Prosol distributed. So that means we can we can get this value using the Prosol distribution. Using the Prosol distribution, we need the parameters for the Prosol. And we were given these parameters over here, 55 and 876. Now it turns out for this size of parameters in the Prosol distribution, Calculating probabilities of the type, the probability that P is uh, smaller than a certain value is really quite complicated because you would have to add up a lot of uh, individual probabilities. But fortunately for large mu, we can approximate the Poisson distribution with a normal distribution. So this is all we're going to use here. And then we just went through the mechanics. We know, we were given the information in the lecture, and the lecture notes that um, the Poisson parameter determines the mean and the standard deviation of the normal distribution. So we could write down the normal distribution which we use for the approximation, and from then onwards we knew we just had to set, use the same techniques as we knew already from the normal distribution. As we were given a probability already, we started in the set world, we found the set value that gives us that particular probability here. We wanted a tail of 1%, it was 2.33, that was that set value. And then we worked back using the set formula in which we needed the mean and the standard deviation. And then we could solve for this P99, we did that for this case one, we got a value of about 605 phone calls. So with a probability of 99%, we will not get more than 605 phone calls in an hour. And that means that the manager knows that 101 employees with a probability of 99% should be able to handle uh, all phone calls. And then we did exactly the same, just for a different uh, parameter value.